Who comes to us from Chesapeake, West Virginia, please welcome Andy Frampton! <laughs> Right here, Chesapeake, West Virginia, a very small town none of you've ever heard of. We are so poor in our town, we don't have a Dollar General, we got a 50 cent sergeant. <laughs> also explains my accent, this is a very Appalachian accent, those of you not from the eastern part of the country. I didn't realize how bad this was, until I started going stand up traveling outside of good old West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't realize that this accent made me sound the way I do, because inside your head, you can't hear how your own voice sounds. You know, you think it's you. And one day, I was at a doctor's appointment, and a guy came in in a stereotypical West Virginia unemployment outfit, which is dirty coal mine and pants, but a clean wife beater. <laughs> Gold chain, fanny pack, socks and sandals, iPhone on his hip, sits down, pulls his iPhone off his hip, says, hey Siri, hey Siri, what's the number of the Canal City DMV? <laughs> and Siri went, Poof. I didn't understand. <laughs> And then instead of saying it more eloquently, this guy just went, Listen to me, you stupid bitch! <laughs> and everybody in that waiting room was shocked and appalled except for me, because I was like, man, that is what people think I sound like outside of West Virginia. <laughs> it's like I'm a white trash ambassador. <laughs> it did get me a movie role, though, last year. Uh, I landed a movie role in the movie Wrong Turn 7. I'm the redneck on the porch of the gas station that goes, You going down in the woods, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Don't let these lights fool you. I'm a big guy. I've been losing weight, lost 38 pounds so far. Uh, don't clap, it's because of drugs. <laughs> I told you, I come from a poor town. Now, uh, recently started dating a girl who is very into yoga and fitness, and that meant that in case I wanted to keep her around, I had to get into yoga and fitness. And that is a turning point in my life. Like, like, I'm just working to where I can tie both my shoes without taking a breather between them. <laughs> Some of the guys aren't laughing because they're like, one day. <laughs> yeah. I bought these six months ago. I haven't untied them since. I, I put them on the pay list. I was like, load bitches are never coming up to <laughs> I introduced her to hiking though, although I am a big guy, I like to go hiking. Um, West Virginia has a lot of nat nat uh, natural parks and such. Love to go hiking out in the woods, man. It's very, very uh, recharging of the old mental batteries, if you will. She had never been until she started dating me. And the second time we ever went, she told me, she said, uh, by the way, um, if something should happen to me out here, I am on the do not resuscitate list. Uh, she, she's made a choice in her life that if something happens, she wants to in a coma or something, she doesn't want to live on machinery. That's fine. I respect it. But I had to inform her that if something did happen to her out in the woods, I would resuscitate her. Because there was no possible way that 12 hours in her leaving, I could come out of the woods covered in dirt and sweat with her 140 pound corpse over my shoulder and look at her DNR agent and go, uh, she failed. <laughs> That's not how that works. I have mirrors at my house. I'm not a redneck vampire. I know what I look like. There's at least four episodes of First 48 with a guy that looks kind of like this. She actually told me, she said, Dunno, be careful in Vegas. That's a, that's a big place for a country boy. There's not gonna be anybody out there like you. And I got here at 10 o'clock this morning, and I was like, I am middle of the pack class in this area. I was like, shit. I got a 401k with a comma in it. I'm going to be good. Turns out she was a tourist town. I'm not making fun of the town. It's just not where it is. Back home, I am a bartender when I'm not on the road doing stand-up. Uh, being a bartender is one of the best things I've ever done because I can be this level of a dickhead and people give me money straight from their pockets. <laughs> Just, it's fantastic. Um, here's something, though, that I've noticed. I've been a bartender for eight years. Uh, I've noticed something, and this is nothing against the ladies in here. Uh, there's a serious difference between men and women when you drink, okay? Uh, men figure out very early on what they want to drink in life. They figure out their beer and their liquor and they stick with that until they die from depression because their dad didn't love them. <laughs> Women, on the 
other hand, want their drinks to taste good, which is madness. <laughs> so you guys drink a different drink every round. And that leads to, if there's any people who have worked in a bar in here, especially the guy behind the bar over there, um, that leads to the worst two words that can be uttered when you ask someone what they want to drink, surprise me. Uh, that ranks number one, number two is something fruity, number three is someone puked, okay? That's how those work. When someone says to me in the bar, surprise me, I like to make a rail tequila sunrise, which is the cheapest tequila you can get in the bar. And then I slide it across to her, keep in mind I'm in a town where the average salary is $15,000 a year, and I like to say, $19. <laughs> and then that woman goes, huh? And I go, surprise! <laughs> Saturday, I am going to do drugs while I'm here. Uh, I hope I have a better experience on drugs here than I did the last time that I did acid. Uh, I did acid, and as I got with my friends, my mother called me and said she needed my assistance at home. And I said, I can't come home right now, Mom. She said, you have to. I said, I can't. She said, Andrew, you have to come home right now. And I said, Mom, honestly, honest to God, uh, if you need me to come home right now, then I need you to first come down to where I am and fight these fucking dragons. <laughs> she said, what? I said, yes, that blue one looks really cool, but then after me and my everybody went past, and I was like, dad's birthday is the day to find out if I'm fireproof or not. <laughs> help me, mommy, your baby boy needs help. Help me so much. Y'all made me friend, thank you so much. <laughs>